Hi there, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nathan, I go by Pete Parker on Marvel Database, or the Marvel Comics Database at uh, marvel.wikia.com. Um, I have a deal with my wife that I can uh, buy comic books every week as long as I review them online. So, we're going to get into the review of The Amazing Spider-Man number 656 by Dan Slott and Marcos Martin, I believe, yes. So, first off, I saw it in the uh, comic book store, and I saw Spider-Man's new outfit. I was very upset. Well, not very upset, but upset enough. Two, two new costume changes in less than a year is a lot, especially when the last one was so terrible. Uh, a lot of people, it came out about the same time as the uh, Tron variant covers were coming out, so a lot of people thought that his stealth costume was the Tron variant costume and there was some confusion there but it was also ugly and kinda dumb. Maybe not ugly but it wasn't very attractive. This one's a little better but uh, but it still doesn't tell you much about what's going on why he needs all these costumes all of a sudden until you get into the story of course. So first off the art is really good uh, Mr. Martin does a, does some good work, and I, I like the coloring especially, but you can tell that the art in this is very... it's like a throwback to the old uh, comic style. Uh, it's like a classic style, like you're reading an old book with a modern twist and modern coloring, which is great, because that's exactly what I like about comics today is the incorporation of digital coloring and lighting effects and all that stuff. I think it makes it a lot better. Um, one really good example of this is this title page here that I actually did not even realize was a title page uh, until I was about three pages into it. Um, you end up reading from you know panel to panel all down the page and then uh, the outside panel, the actual page itself, is a panel also that incorporates into the story. I didn't even realize that there all these uh, uh, credits were in there until I looked at it again, usually, well, really during the review, but I, I just thought it was such a, a pleasing layout and uh, really a, a really great example of how well the, the uh, book in, is put together and how well the flow works. So the story in this is about uh, Spider-Man had just in the last issue. I breezed through it. I didn't. I haven't been reading Spider-Man for about two years, but I pick up an issue here and there to try to figure out what's going on with him and see when's a good jumping-on point again. Um, apparently, in the last issue, Martha Jameson died, and Spider-Man vowed to never let anybody die in his city again. So, of course, immediately after that happened, somebody got shot. Um, a villain named Massacre, I believe his name is, uh, took some hostages at a bank and shot somebody immediately to get the cops' attention, and then uh, right after that killed several more people uh, to make them do what he wants. Um, so, Spider-Man shows up. He is trying to... Uh, help the situation and he's trying to recover from the loss of his uh, spider sense which he doesn't believe to really be a huge uh, change in his uh, normal heroing but turns out to be much more difficult in everything and he relied a lot upon it a lot more than he originally realized so uh, part of the entire story in this book is him uh, dealing with these changes in his life like his inability to use spider tracers or his aim being changed or uh, the spider sense just kind of backing up his decisions and making helping him make correct decisions as well as dodge bullets he can't do that anymore so uh, the villain uh, massacre I think his name is I keep forgetting it is, it's kind of interesting, but just not, I guess it's not memorable enough to really fully remember. Anyway, uh, Massacre's shooting guns and killing people with guns and explosions, so the 
Peter decides that the best way to combat that is to create a, a new outfit. And it's actually uh, inspired by Paladin's comment. Peter gets actually shot a little bit and has to go to the night nurse. She fixes him up. Paladin's there in the uh, waiting room and says and mentions something to him about him being uh, really on edge or something like that. Which is right here. And he gets all mad. And then he realizes, hey, I probably need some other method of deflecting bullets since I don't have a spider sense anymore. And he develops the suit. I guess he has been developing this suit anyway, and it was tucked away in his black box at work while he was uh, working on stuff. I, I, I guess at, when he, since he's a scientist and he's working on stuff constantly, he has projects in the works, but for the most part, uh, you don't even know what those projects are. And he goes back to his uh, lab pulls out this thing and whips up some new webbing I guess that he was thinking about or something like that. Whips it up pretty quick and ends up beating the bad guy of course. Uh, outsmarting him instead of you know just punching him and not giving up. I've always seen Spider-Man as the kind of guy who you know really has uh, the odds against him and the only reason he really wins is because of his indomitable will and uh, his uh, sense of doing the right thing in all the circumstances so it's kind of neat to see a different aspect of him actually using how smart he is to try to outsmart the bad guys and you know win so that's pretty cool and um, since this costume is thicker it had me thinking about his original costume and something that I've always disliked about the spider-man costume maybe Somebody out there can answer the question for me. So he's he's got to stick to stuff with his palms of his hands and the bottoms of his feet, right? And we're talking about outdoor structures, cement, stuff that's really dirty, gets rained on and snowed on and nasty stuff in the air and smog and stuff like that. And his costume has to be thin enough in the palms and under the feet so that he can actually stick to stuff. But at the same time, when he changes out of this costume, he... Uh, his hands are not dirty. You know, can you imagine how... Have you ever walked outside, you know, uh, maybe down the street or to your mailbox or in your driveway and come back in? Your feet are filthy from like 10 feet of walking. I imagine that Spider-Man's feet would be even more nasty because he's touching surfaces with the bottoms of his feet and the palms of his hands all the time that are never cleaned, never touched by anybody. So I've always kind of bugged me about the costume is that it's got to be thin enough for him to stick but it's not so thin that he's getting dirt on his hands can you imagine like you run into spider-man right after you change back into peter parker and you go to shake his hand and it's like black like nasty black It'd be weird anyway that's a little bit of a tangent for you uh the, the final review on this is that it's uh, it's really good art and the coloring is really amazing so that gives it a lot and then uh, Peter dealing with uh, the loss of his spider sense is really like shown in some interesting ways and th ways that you wouldn't normally think about it right away I mean obviously if you sat there and thought about it I'm sure you could think of your own ways how a spider could or Peter could be affected from the loss of his spider sense but really this team has done a good job in uh, putting some stuff out there that I didn't think of, think of right away. So I'm going to give it a, a 4 out of 5. And I'm actually going to continue to look at this to see if I need to start buying it again and get back into the Spider-Man uh, buying. Which, like I said, I haven't been buying it for two years, so that says something. All right, that's the end of this review. Uh, check me out at uh, marvel.wikia.com. Bye.